Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we'll be discussing about gradient boosting. Now, this particular algorithm is one of the most requested algorithm by all my subscribers. So definitely, I'll be explaining this and this video will be divided into four parts because we need to understand this by equations, by mathematical formulas and all. And again, understand in the first part, we'll just understand how gradient boosting works. In the second part, we'll be discussing about the pseudo algorithm. Uh, about the working of this gradient boosting because it will be definitely very very helpful when you are actually going for the interviews right in the third part and again why first and second part it is with res respect to regression problem statement i'll be discussing and then i'll be going ahead with classification problem statement and with respect to this guys you need to understand this very properly because this is one of the you know when i talk about all the ensemble techniques like random forest adapt boost uh, gradient boosting extreme gradient boosting these are one of the best algorithms that are used to solve a lot of problem statements so it is better that you understand this and this is also one of the most favorite interview topic for the interviewers itself so let us go ahead and try to understand how does gradient boosting actually work now with respect to gradient boosting guys this is a boosting technique and if you have seen my complete machine learning playlist, I have discussed about both bagging and boosting technique. In bagging technique, I have discussed about random forest. And in boosting, I have also discussed about ADA boost. Now, before going ahead with respect to this particular video, you need to have a proper understanding of decision trees. How does decision tree actually work? Okay, so if you, have, if you don't know about this, guys, it will be very difficult for you to understand this. Now, let us go ahead and try to understand how does a gradient boosting work. Okay, now I have a data set. Uh, in my independent feature, I have experience and degree. My dependent feature is having salary. Now this is my input features like experience is two years, degree is B, then this is my salary. And similarly, I have four other records like this, right? Now what is the first step in decision tree? So let me just write it down. My first step is to compute the base model, which will give me one output, which will give me one output. Now what will be this output? This output will be the average of all these particular values, average of all this salary. So if I try to compute the average 50 plus 70 plus 80 plus 100 divided by 4, right? Now if I try to find out the average, the approximate value that I'm going to take is 75 guys. Okay, now don't tell me Krish, you have not written the right value. You have not computed it rightly. Don't do that. I just taken an example. Okay, 75k. Okay, so this is my first base model and remember whenever I give my training data set the output will be only 75 pretty much clear right so let me write it down over here okay this is my y hat y hat is basically my predicted value so I'll be having 75 75 75 75 okay pretty much simple done first step okay now in the second step in the second step we will be computing compute residuals residuals basically means errors okay errors or i can also call this as pseudo residual i'll tell you why pseudo residual guys because understand in order to compute errors we basically use a loss function you know in regression you have different kind of loss function like mean squared error root mean squared error we have loss functions in classification like log loss we have hinge loss and many more losses right so based on that we'll try to compute the residual errors now in this case we'll use a simple you know, we'll be using a simple loss function. Just consider this. Uh, here, my loss will actually be what I'll try to do in order to compute the residuals. I will just subtract my actual value with the prediction value. Just for an example, guys, here, you don't tell me that why I'm not taking square. Just to show you an example. Because in the next video, where I'll be discussing about a pseudo algorithm, there I'll be telling you about different kind of loss functions. And there I'll be using the exact formula. In this case, what I'm doing, I'm just trying to subtract the actual value with the prediction value. Okay. Now this, initially when I'm subtracting this, I'll write a new column that is my R1. So this is basically my residual one. Now with respect to this, guys, if I subtract 50 minus 75, it is nothing but minus 25. This is uh, minus 5 plus 5 and 25 I understand this is my r1 my residuals my errors okay in the first phase now third thing guys third very important thing now after this base model i will add one decision tree sequentially so i'll construct a decision tree now in this decision tree in this decision tree my input will be my experience and degree okay this is my xi that is same input like experience and degree but my output value my dependent feature will not be salary it will be this residual error r1 okay in this it will be a residual error r1 so what i have done this is my base model after this i have added a decision tree i have trained with the data where i have independent features and my output is basically my 
residual. So I have trained this decision tree, right? Now, one important thing, okay? When I have trained this data, when I have trained my decision tree with this data, obviously my decision tree will predict the output of the residuals only, right? So if I pass my independent feature once again to this decision tree, okay, once again to this decision tree, I will be having my R2 feature. Suppose my R2 residual 2 that is coming out after passing this independent feature is somewhere like this. Suppose I get minus 23, minus 3, okay. Um, suppose I get 3 and this is suppose 20. Suppose I get this kind of residuals, right. Now this is the residual that I am actually getting, the output, right. Output from this decision tree. Now, still I, I don't know how to compute this salary. So let us see how to compute this salary. Now suppose I pass this particular value to this two models, one is the base model and one is to the decision tree one, okay, which is attached sequentially. Then what is the output I'll get? So whenever I pass through the base model for the first record, I will definitely get 75, right? I'll be getting 75 because always remember my base model, whatever records I pass, it will give me 75. So after the base model, I've got the value is 75. Now with respect to decision tree one, I'll be getting some residual value, right? Some residual values. Now suppose in this case, I will be getting a residual value of minus 23 for this record for the first record right for the first record and now if i try to subtract 75 minus 23 what it will be it will be somewhere around 52 right now this 52 and my actual value 50 is very very much near so do we think that this model is performing well it is it is doing a wonderful job the the answer is guys no understand this is overfitting problem here within my decision tree one i'm able to get a value which is very very near to the salary right this is an overfitting problem altogether right suppose if i had my residual 2 as 20 at that time 75 minus sorry if i had like minus 25 i would have get got 75 minus 25 is equal to 50 right which is pretty much bad right because understand with respect to decision trees with respect to a model that we create with respect to any models that we create we should have a generalized model which has low variance and low bias okay now in this case i am having low bias but high variance because when I get my new test data, definitely this value will be a little bit bigger, you know, for my new test data. So for that, to prevent this, what we'll do is that when we are adding this, right, we will be adding a learning rate and then we'll be adding your R2 value, the residual value. So if I write and this alpha or learning rate ranges between 0 to, point, uh, 0 to 1, okay. Suppose I take it as 0.1, this residual value will be minus 23. So I have 75 minus 0.23, sorry, it will be 2.3, okay, 2.3 and here I am getting the value as 73.7, okay. So here I have got my value as 73, but still this value is having a huge difference, right, when compared to the output salary. So what we will do after this, we will add one more decision tree. Now this decision tree will be now created based on the output based on the output of this R2 value that is my residual 2 value and my independent feature will be same. So this decision tree will be computing my next residuals okay one after the other. So what I can do is that I can write a generic formula saying that f of x is equal to my base model I'll write it as h0 of x right now if I want to add one more decision tree this will become alpha 1 h1 of x h1 of x is nothing but understand the output that is given by this right. Similarly if I want to add one more uh, decision tree, then it will become H2 of X. Similarly, like this, I will be having alpha n HN of X. And finally, I can write it as sigma i is equal to 1 to n H of i, sorry, alpha of i H of i X. Right? So this is my final output. And again, I'll be discussing about this in more depth in my pseudo algorithm that is my next video but just understand what we are doing we are adding after one base model we are adding we are creating this sequential decision tree based on this residuals that we are getting and by that you'll be seeing that after some time this residual will also be decreasing this residual will also be decreasing this value you can see that minus 25 to minus 23 then minus 20 minus 19 minus 18 so like that minus 15 minus 10 up till some decision tree will be going and this our main aim is to basically to reduce this residual error and after that suppose any new test data that comes we have to pass from this base model to that many decision trees and we need to try to add this in this way so in my, suppose one more decision tree is there i'll be adding with r uh, alpha 2 with my next h of x then alpha 3 with my next next h of x like that i'll be continuously adding 
you know it may be a minus value it may be a plus value and this alpha value you usually decide with, with the help of hyperparameter tuning right it will be again between 0 to 1 now i have got i hope you have got the idea guys how a gradient boosting works why we call it as a sequential tree why we call it as a boosting tree because understand after the base base model we are adding decision tree sequentially we are adding sequentially right we are boosting this base model as we go ahead with the help of this residual values that are getting computed that are getting computed so i hope you understood this particular video now guys in my next video i'll be discussing about this pseudo algorithm and if you want to get a head start i'll be giving the link of the wikipedia in my description of this particular video just go over there have a look this is how the whole gradient boosting actually works and that i'll try to discuss mathematically like how do we come up with this particular base model how do we calculate the average value how do we compute the residual values everything so this will be a repeated steps unless and until we get some for some n number of trees so i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed and i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all bye bye